Hello and welcome to the Google App for Education K-12 demo. I'll be doing this demo from the perspective of a day in the life of a K-12 teacher. We'll cover the core suite of Google Apps, Gmail, Calendar, Talk, Docs, and Sites. The first app I'll be showing is Calendar. As an educator, what's the first thing you think about when you wake up in the morning? Okay, after, I need coffee. You want to know, what am I going to do today? Schedules are dynamic. Writing things down manually in a planner isn't dynamic. That all changes with Google Calendar. As a teacher, this is my work schedule. I know I have a language arts block, math block, and science block. I have recess duty today as well. I can adjust my calendar to see a day, week, or month view. Nothing too out of the ordinary. What's awesome about Google Calendar is the ability to overlay multiple calendars in one view. So as educators, we know that a lot of our day is spent inside the walls of the school. But despite what our students may think, we do have personal lives. So I can overlay a personal calendar on top of my work calendar to get a comprehensive view of everything going on in my life. My work calendar is shared with my colleagues, but my personal calendar is private, only to me. I see that I have lunch with my friend Karen on Wednesday and a Warriors game on Friday. Here at Google, we're based out of Mountain View, California, the Bay Area, and I'm a huge Warriors fan. So I want to know exactly when they're playing and who they're playing. So I can add a special interest calendar to my overview calendar as well. And we have tons of special interest calendars to meet all of your needs. Anyway, it's Monday morning. I need to focus on what I'm going to be teaching. I've created a standards map that can also overlay on top of my work calendar. I know that in math I'm teaching number sense 1.2 on these days and comprehension 4.1 on those days. I'm starting to teach science 2.6 on Tuesday, which requires that my students understand the life cycle of plants. If I don't have a great selection of books about plants in my classroom, I can overlay the library calendar and add my class to the schedule. To go even further, I'll want to notify the librarian that will be coming at this time, in case he's not checking his calendar regularly, and ask him to put aside some books about plants from my class. So I have my class schedule all figured out, and my students have been doing really well, and I'm such an amazing teacher and all my students love me, so I think, wouldn't it be great to plan a field trip to the San Francisco Exploratorium because they have a special exhibit on plant life this month? Well, that's exactly what I can do with Google Calendar. So I overlay Jeff and Kristen, my grade level colleagues' calendars. I see that they don't have very much listed, so they're probably not effective teachers. But anyway, we can schedule a time when the three of us can meet. I book a conference room, and voila, it appears on all of our calendars instantaneously. If I need to move the meeting to another day, or make it 30 minutes instead, I can do that as well. Now, no one can complain that they didn't know about the faculty meeting because the notice was lost in their mailbox shuffle. Well, I'm done with my calendar for now. Now, I'm going to spend some time on Gmail and Talk. When I opened my inbox, I realized that my school Gmail account looks almost exactly the same as my personal Gmail account. The main difference is that it's personalized for my domain. You can see that my address is becky at g1usd.org, not becky at gmail.com. And that we have a custom district logo instead of the traditional Gmail logo. Go G1 Union, I can say as I look at my logo. Gmail does all the normal things that you would expect out of email like send messages back and forth. I can also have a list of tasks. I can cross them out as I do them and add things in as I need to do them. But what really differentiates Gmail are the labs. Labs are extra features that you can enable to help personalize your email. Some of my favorites are undo send, canned responses, but my absolute favorite is the message translation lab, which is essential for schools and districts that have English language learners. We want to make sure that you're communicating effectively with parents. Take, for example, this message from one of my parents sent to me in Spanish. I don't know what any of this means except for hola, but my Gmail recognizes that it's in another language, and we support a lot of them. I can translate it to English right in the message without having to copy and paste into a translator. Awesome. 
If I go back to my inbox, I can check that my colleague Jeff and I are starting to plan this field trip to the Exploratorium. He sent a new message to me, but instead of searching for all the messages that Jeff has sent me regarding this field trip, it could be mixed in with calendar reminders, messages from students, etc. Gmail has grouped all of these messages with the same subject line into one conversation. So I can respond directly to Jeff in this email and he'll get an, my immediate response. If I don't want to wait for him to email me back, and his classroom is on the third floor and mine is on the first, and I'm definitely not traveling up all those stairs in the morning, I can go over to my chat window and see that he's online. I can send him an instant message, or we can do a video or audio chat to plan this field trip. So Jeff and I are going to work on this doc together. I open up my docs list. My do in my docs list, I can see all the documents that I own or have been shared with me. This is so much better than having a file cabinet overflowing with paper, much less having to find something in that mess later on. My students can share their folders with me as well. So whenever they create a document, they drop it in our shared folder and I have access to it. But Jeff and I are working on this permission slip, so I should get to it. I can just search for the document I'm looking for. When I open it, I see that Jeff is already viewing the document. Real-time collaboration is built right into the product. So both Jeff and I can edit the document at the same time without worrying about being locked out or having to check it out. Right here, I can see exactly where Jeff's cursor is, and I can see what he types as he types it, character by character. I can add comments to tell Jeff exactly what I'd like him to work on. If I want to be more interactive, I have this collaboration window that allows me to talk to him without having to go back into my chat and my email. What's also special about Docs is the fact that I can go back and see the revision history. So if I want to know what the document looked like a few weeks ago and who made certain edits, I can do that. All of the edits are color coded by user so you know exactly how much each person contributed and when. If Jeff, and remember he wasn't really an effective teacher based on his calendar, totally messed up the doc after November 5th, I can revert back to an earlier version if I needed. Lastly, I want to share this doc with my principal to make sure she's up to date on our plans for the field trip. In terms of sharing, I can decide to make this private, share it with certain people like my principal, share it with people in my domain, or I can make it public to the web. And these sharing settings are the same for calendar and sites. Now that I have all my plans laid out and I'm ready to begin the day, the bell rings. Of course, I go into a little panic when the bell rings because we all know how kids are when they come into a classroom. They want to chat with their friends, they're rowdy and loud, but not so if they have an engaging opening activity. I've checked out the laptop cart and my kids know to grab a computer, log into their email and access the form that I've emailed them. Forms is the app I'm going to focus on next. You can use a form to collect information on anything. Parent-teacher signups, faculty potlucks, travel expenses, whatever. In this case, I'm using a form as a check for understanding or formative assessment. Let's say I read this story, a chair from my mother, to my class last week, and now I want, them, I want to ask them a few questions for an assessment. The themes make this form way more engaging than a traditional paper and pencil assessment. What kid isn't going to want to take a quiz that has blockheads in the background? <laughs> Forms is the best because the data that is submitted in the form is automatically populated in a spreadsheet. You don't believe me? Take a look. I fill out these answers pretending I'm a student, and as soon as I submit the form, there it is in a spreadsheet. Now I don't have to bring home stacks of paper to grade every night. Looking at the spreadsheet interface, it looks like your typical spreadsheet. You can format your data, add charts, we have tons of formulas. That's not interesting. All spreadsheets can do that. But there are tons of features specific to Google Spreadsheets that different, differentiate us. You know you'll always have that smart Alec kid in your class who thinks he's smarter than you. So let's say he randomly comes up to you and goes, name the governor of California without looking it up on Google.com. Well, using the Google lookup function, you can use Google search capability to look up data without having to open another web browser. And voila, there's your answer. Your student has not stumped you. So you're feeling pretty happy, but we know that working with kids can be challenging. So sometimes you're sad. Sometimes you're excited. Sometimes you're disappointed. If you want Google to help you figure out how you're feeling, you can drag and drop to get 20 more emotions pre-filled. Pick your emotion. Today I'm feeling excited because my students are using gadgets in the classroom. 
And you can check out some of these gadgets here. One of my favorites is the flashcard gadget. If you have a student struggling with math facts or vocabulary words or science terms, you can create personalized flashcards just for them. Another gadget that I'm going to use today is the motion chart. My students, Jeff's students, and Kristen's students have all been collecting data on plants. Two classes had plants that were given normal rain, and one class had a plant that was given acid rain. We observed the plant height and number of leaves over time, and we collected our data in one spreadsheet that was shared among the classes. Because we all know the more data you collect in an experiment, the better your results will be. Now we will use the motion chart to get a good idea of how the plants were affected over time. I'm going to have the circles represent number of leaves, the y-axis to show plant height, the x-axis to show time, and I'll label the graph so that we know which plant is which. When I run this motion chart, my students can see that over time the plant with the normal rain grew taller and had more leaves, while the plant given acid rain didn't grow very tall, nor did it have very many leaves. Spreadsheets is seriously awesome, as are all the docs, and the best part about it is that you don't have to start from scratch. We're not trying to make you reinvent the wheel, so we have a full template gallery that allows you to choose from already made templates. Some of these are public, and some of them can just be those shared specifically for your domain. Now that I'm done teaching all of my lessons for the day, lastly, I want to update my teacher site before I go home. This is an example of a teacher site. The editor is what you see is what you get. You don't have to know any HTML or coding, which is great for a non-techie like me. But I can create a really rich site that embeds images, I can embed a calendar, I can add in clip art. I can also have documents stored in a file cabinet on the site. And these can be saved in a variety of formats. And in order to edit something, I just have to click Edit, Type, and Save. And anyone who's viewing my site We'll see those edits immediately. Creating a page is easy. Take a look. I want to create a new page. It's going to be a web page. I can add text and save. I can change the layout. I can add a calendar. I can also add an image. And there you have it. A few clicks of the button and I have a web page. Well, it looks like I had a pretty successful day as a teacher. My day ran a lot more smoothly using Google Apps for Education. I hope you learned some new tips and tricks that you can start using in your school today.